almost like the Eurovision Song Contest, if you know what that is. So we're here to talk about Hawthorns. Um, I've been working with Hawthorns oh, since I was 34 years of age. Uh, I'm 64 now, so that's 30 years. Uh, and this tree here, uh, um, some of you may be familiar with, it's known as the tall guy. Um, it's really the one that I learned most of my mistakes on, because let's face it, we all, we all make mistakes. So I, um, there's a full story of that if you go on my blog, which is yamadori.co.uk. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right to the very beginning um, of why I think hawthorns are probably the best deciduous species uh, available for bonsai, uh, no question. Uh, the reason for that is, is that they will give you small leaves, which is, which is a good thing um, in, in bonsai. You don't want big leaves. Um, fantastic craggy bark, again, which is a good sign of age. Easy to style, easy to maintain. Fantastic in springtime when the new leaves come out like you've got here, beautiful green fresh leaves. And then, of course, if you're lucky, the flowers come in springtime and then the fruit will appear later. And then if there are enough sugars in the tree, you will get fantastic autumn color. And then of course in winter, you get to see the tree in really all of its glory and all of those beautiful branches that you've created over those years. Now hawthorn and deciduous trees in general are not something that you can rush. You, they do take time, but you know that, that's, surely that's the fun of bonsai in taking that time to create that tree. Now the tree that here, that you can see here, the one that I made all my mistakes on, 30 years. Now the raft, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with, um, took me 26 years. That was 26 years from raw material to it winning the best deciduous tree at the trophy in 2017. So let me tell you about this tree. This was a Yamadori that was collected four years ago. Um, it, ha it actually had a another trunk coming up here and I air layered it. And if I turn it round, you can just see here the scar that was left. Now that has been carved by me. Um, what I tend to do on my deciduous trees is, is carve hollows that, that's really the way I, I like to see it. And particularly with hawthorn, because they're, they're, they're a relatively soft, um, soft wood. You'll notice that there is a, a new leader uh, coming here. I'm letting, I've wired this in position, and I'm just gonna let this grow so that it will fatten up this area here. Then I'll cut it off, and then I'll start to grow the branches for it here. Let me just see if we've got any questions. Okay, we have a question which is it's saying when is the optimum time to trim hawthorn well i will actually get that round to that later uh, in this uh, in this live video uh, because I'm, what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to explain exactly how i how i style the beauty of deciduous trees is in the ramification that you create from those branches and those branches ideally need to have a taper they need to be able to go from fat too thin. What you don't want to do is take a long branch and then wire it pigtail, squash it up. That really is very, very bad technique. It was something that a lot of artists, including me, were doing many years ago. We don't do that now. Uh, it's not about just creating a silhouette. It's, creating, it's about creating the good structure of the branch. So we have the new top here. We have a lower branch here. Now I've actually got two branches going here at the moment. I may use both of them, I may not. What I may do is I may drop one down and lift one up or I may take one away altogether. It all depends on how those develop over a period of time. There is actually a very ugly part of this tree which you as an audience 
cannot see and I'll show it to you. It's around the back here. Can you see? The actual trunk comes around and then back on itself. So you've got a very, very thick area. And that's not desirable. That inverse taper is not desirable in a deciduous tree. In a deciduous tree, you want to see good taper from the nabari going all the way up to the uh, to the top of the tree. So what I've done is I've disguised that by hiding it towards the back. You don't see it. I know I can see it, but you'll never see it in the final front image of the tree. Let me see if we've got another question. So we have a question. Cutting off the thorns, is it a benefit? Um, no, not necessarily a benefit. Um, I actually remove the thorns just to make it easier for wiring and also to make it more forgiving for when you're working. Um, what you will find is that behind the thorn is a latent bud. There is a bud sitting just behind where that thorn is. So if you are removing the thorn, be careful not to damage that, that bud that is sitting in there. Unfortunate, really, in a lot of the hawthorns that I collect, there doesn't seem to be that many thorns, which I'm very lucky for. So let's talk about collecting. Black bag is something that I've been using for about 15 years and about eight years ago, I put it out into the uh, wider world. Um, it's something that has actually been around for some time and, and quite a few bonsai artists were, were using it, but we're, we're kind of keeping it to themselves. Um, but I thought, you know, we need to keep the Yamadori alive and, and if we can improve the success rate, that's what we should do. So what I do is when I collect from the mountain, I try to get as much roots as possible. I put it in a very open soil mixture, which you can see here. Now the soil mixture that I use when I am collecting uh, establishing trees is 60% akadama, very high amount of akadama, and the rest is made up of pumice and alpine or sharp sand. Most of you will know it. I then, and, and this is covered in a number of videos, you can see it, but I'll, I'll be very brief. I then layer a very large amount of sphagnum moss on top and then place the whole thing in a big plastic bag and then let it sweat. And over a number of weeks, new growth begins to appear. It's a technique which is working. We'll not go into detail now. There are videos out there. You can have a look at it on my blog. And if you've been following me on Facebook, you'll have seen I'm giving sort of weekly updates on the trees that I've recently collected. So far as feeding in the first year of collecting, I only feed towards the end of the season, really to prepare the tree going over into winter. I, I do not feed newly collected trees. I don't. Uh, for the simple fact of the matter, I don't want to put them under stress. I don't want to sort of try to pump them going. So I will feed towards the end of the growing season once I know that the tree, the tree is well established. Let's see if we have another question. Okay, we have two questions. One from uh, Eli, I hope it's Eli Aitkins, uh, from the USA. How do American hawthorns uh, differ from uh, European hawthorns? Um, from my experience, American hawthorns don't really have the movement. They tend to be, um, tend to be very, very straight um, and a lot coarser uh, 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 in their, in their uh, growth pattern. Um, European hawthorns do tend to have a bit more movement in them. Um, when I collect, I collect off limestone only. I all, that, that is all I collect off. I don't collect, I, I don't collect out in the field. I don't collect from hedgerows, um, which is growing in field soil. I grow, I collect mine specifically from limestone and, and specifically limestone scree, uh, which is the chippings. Um, so um, the, I, I don't know if you have similar things in America. Um, I, I, I just I just don't. I've not really had much experience uh, in America with Hawthorns. Um, I'm due to be over there in, uh, next year, uh, so it'd be nice if some people have got Hawthorns, if they can bring them and we can discuss that. Uh, the other question was um, flowers. 
Uh, we'll get on to flowers later, but so the question was, do I remove the flowers? The answer is no, I don't remove the flowers because I believe that the flowers are an integral beauty uh, in, the, in the bonsai. Let me take a drink. So from Stavros, Stavros Papadopoulos in Greece, how do I know when the tree is established? Very good question. Um, depending on the size of the tree, if you've got a very fat trunk, what you may have is you may have um, sap still in the tree that is feeding the branches. You're only really going to know, and this is something that Terry and I have discussed quite recently, um, is that you only really know that you've got the tree in the second growing season. That's for sure. Unless, of course, it's, it's incredibly strong and it's throwing out branches all over the place. If it's, they can be very slow to develop, uh, so never give up. If, if nothing has happened in the first year, do not trash the tree, do not throw it away. Put it in a semi-shade place, protect it from frost. You, you'll be surprised it may well come back. We've had trees that appear to come back from the dead. The fact is they're not dead. We call it in the UK sulking, they're sulking. They're not happy that they've been moved. So what I would definitely recommend is never give up on a hawthorn until you get into the end of the second season and it's simply not done anything. Let me see if we have another question. Ah, this is from Alfred. Alfred Grech, I hope I said it correctly. Um, what month do I air layer? Now, hawthorns are incredibly easy to air layer. Very, very easy indeed. You can actually air layer them as thick as my arm. And uh, I would certainly start the air layer about this time, right now. Certainly if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I would do it right now. When we've got growth like this, and what I would do is I would completely ring bark the whole, whole branch for sure, completely ring bark it. And not just ring bark it, go inside and scrape away so you get that layer down to the heartwood. And then sphagnum moss, clear plastic bag, black plastic bag, and then make sure it stays moist. So I would, when the, I never say the time of the month, I say, look at the tree. It's when the growth is approximately like this. This is exactly the right time to air lay. And as I say, this secondary trunk here was air layered and that air layer is in Germany. It'd be nice to know if the guy who bought it is actually online and uh, we can see how it's doing. Um, I have a question about a Quercus Super. I do have one in my collection. We're not talking about Quercus Super. Okay, when is the best time to collect Hawthorne in the Mediterranean? So, I'm glad you said time as opposed to month because the best time is just when the new buds are beginning to appear. They appear like little red bullets. Once those things are just beginning to appear, that's the time to collect. Do not collect when it's like this. It's too late now. It's too late to collect Hawthorne now. You could collect, but I can't guarantee that you would make it survive. The tree is already beginning to grow and I wouldn't collect it. Save it till the next year. But the, the, the time to collect, I'll, I'll say it again, is just as when you look at the branches, you'll see little pinpricks of red. That's absolutely the right time to collect. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, that's the time to collect. Why do you collect from lime soil? It does, is it to do with root structure? Does it like alkaline soil? Um, it likes limestone, <laughs> what can I say? Um, what I do tend to do as well is I do tend to put some limestone chippings occasionally on the surface as some of the I, I, where I collect hawthorns I also collect yew trees and uh, I always put uh, chunks of limestone on the surface to let those minerals go down through it. Right question which hawthorn for bonsai, it thrives better in a warmer zones like eight or nine. Hmm, I'm not sure. Um, they, I'll start by, by saying that the reason I 
really only work with native trees is because I know they grow in, in my environment. Um, I actually only own one imported Japanese tree, uh, an azalea, which um, is a, a, an exposed root. I would never be able to create one, so I, I always wanted one. So, so I only style native trees. If you've got hawthorns growing in your area, then you know that they're going to thrive. So collect the ones local to your area. Now, it would be foolish of me to send this tree to Dubai because the temperatures there are just too hot for, for, for this tree. So, you know, only work on the trees which are local to your area, you know, um, that can withstand the extremes of the temperature. I mean, surprisingly here in the UK, we've had, I think it was about 23 degrees today in April, which is, which is crazy, you know. We, we, we never have it this hot. In, in, in April. So um, it's difficult for me to say what species, if you've got hawthorn growing in your area, then you should be able to make it into a bonsai. Let's see if we have another question. A oh, very good question. The best time to prune hawthorn so as not to negatively impact flower and berry display. That's a very good question. Um, they will flower on last year's wood. So you have to understand what you're looking at is developing the tree to a particular shape. Once you've got that shape, then you can start to enjoy the flowers. What you can't, it's very difficult to um, have a tree looking great in development stage. This tree is in development stage. It's, it's, not, it's not finished yet. So if it gets flowers, great. But in actual fact, I'm, I'm happy for it to create the shape that I want. So the, let me see what the question was again, one second. Best time to prune hawthorns. Um, I, think, I think I might have answered that. Just, just get to the shape that you want and the flowers will thrive on the previous year and older wood. Now, the interesting thing with this tree here is that um, I've got flower buds coming all over the tree um, and I don't prune that tree at all. It, it seems to only, if, if I make a cut, the, the tree then throws out a shoot. If I don't make a cut, it doesn't throw out a shoot. <coughs> this is why hawthorn are great for hedging material. So, you know, um, get it to the final shape that you want then stop pruning and then what you can do is simply rub out the buds so they don't elongate and then you're going to force that energy back into the tree and it will create flowers. The other thing to consider about flowering as well is if you constantly feed the tree it's going to think that it doesn't need to reproduce because it's healthy. Now flowers are created because the tree needs to reproduce itself. So it, it, if it's thinking, I don't need to reproduce myself. So what I'm saying is, is to some extent, starve the tree of feed, you'll get more flowers. The good examples are here in the UK, we have an area called the Cotswolds and there are wisteria growing out of little holes in the ground outside pubs. And you're thinking, these can't get any feed, they can't get any water, yet they're throwing flowers out all over the place. So if you bear that in mind, don't feed too much in the, pre in the year before if you want flowers the following year. Let me see. Oh, when is the best period of time to do heavy carving on a hawthorn? Um, Any time, really. I mean, it depends what you wish to achieve. Um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not particularly into elaborate carving of, of hawthorns. If you look at this one here, you'll see uh, that the branch was taken off, but I've, I've simply hollowed it out and left this harder piece in the middle. Um, really, because what I wanted to do was I wanted to create that movement. I'm going to bring another tree up um, because I brought, I've got, I brought two along. Uh, for you to, to take a look at. All right, okay.
Okay, I'll just take a question here. Uh, do I pinch the new growth uh, or do I let it harden before I prune it? It depends what result I want to achieve. Um, once I have got the, to the shape that I want, I will, as soon as the new growth comes, I will rub off the bud because I don't want it to change, change that shape. Um, if you look on, on some of the branches on here, for example, this branch here is 25 years old and it's only as, it's, it's not even as thick as my, as my little finger. This is 25 years old, this branch. And by the way, every branch on that tree was, was created uh, uh, from scratch. Again, if you go on yamadori.co.uk and search tall guy, you'll see the whole history uh, of that tree. So what we have here, um, the question was heavy carving. And there has been some heavy carving done on this tree. This is a very, very fat, some people would call it sumo um, hawthorn. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm actually styling it as a mother and child. Um, I don't know what she would call it in, in other regions, but uh, we call it a mother and child, which is a bigger tree with a smaller, tr a smaller tree attached to it. So what I've done in, in, in fact is I have I've got secondary, I'm sorry, I've got first branches, second branches, third branches, and I'm now on my fourth here. So if you look here, this is really good. This is, this is ideal so far as development of, of this branch is concerned. And what you've got here is you've got two main branches coming out from here and one further down and one further down here. What you don't want is you don't want lots of branches coming from the same position. If you get say three, four, five, absolutely rub out the weaker ones to let the strong ones come through. That's in the development stage. So if you look here, pruning of a hawthorn is critical because bad technique takes a long time to correct. And as I said, I learned all of my mistakes on this tree. It is full of mistakes, but it was a process of learning. Okay. Have I ever had woodworm in the dead? Have I ever had woodworm in the dead wood of a hawthorn? Answer: No. Um, interesting. You should ask that because, in my view, on deadwood on deciduous trees is the rotting of the deadwood is a natural process and it creates that creates a natural look and an age to it so I'm quite happy for the deadwood that I've carved to begin to rot now again this happened here with this tree this area is rotting and it looks significantly better than this area that was carved so so I'm I'm not particularly concerned about about woodworm or rot on the subjects of that let me let me bring this other tree up I'm going to show you the bark here This tree was, I purchased this tree for £48 uh, from a farmer who was in our bonsai club. And um, we knew the exact age of the tree. It was 32 years old when I bought it. So it's over 30 years that I've had it. So we now know it's 62 years of age. When it was, uh, when it was I, I bought it, all of the bark here was very, very smooth and smooth bark indicates a young tree so to get this flaky bark this craggy bark is a, a technique that colin lewis um, uh, explained to me uh, one time when he was here in my garden many years ago we're talking 25 years ago um, and what you do is you take a scalpel and you cut into the bark down you cut down into the bark wherever you want old aged bark to look then you wrap the whole tree in moss sphagnum moss and you then wrap it with burlap or sacking and then leave it for two or three years now it's not attractive 
but what it does is it gives you this very old look on, on the tree this is very it's quite quite firm but that's a really nice technique so I'll go through it again take a very sharp scalpel just go down it don't go sideways you cut through to the cadmium layer and then wrap it in moss and then wrap it in sacking you can see a little closer here and see that how the rotting there has worked but have a look at the uh, tall guy on yamadori.co.uk this little fat guy back up. So here he is. Just going to quickly look and see if I've missed any. Okay, Richie Liz Sabino. Um, sorry, I missed your question here. Uh, in the course of feeding or fertilizing, using slow release or quick release, does the efficiency of the fertilizer weaken, weakens, and being washed off every time you water daily or as needed? Okay, so let's let's talk about feeding. Um, I only use organic. That's uh, that's very important to me. Uh, I use uh, fish emulsion. I use seaweed extract and I also use um, the Japanese uh, um, rapeseed cakes. Um, I've tried lots of things all, all, over, the, all, over the period. Tibolo was very good, but they don't make it anymore. Um, Biogold is good, but it's expensive. Um, but you know, if you, don't, if you can't get hold of these specialist feeds, if you take just a generic feed like miracle Grow, that's fine, but do it at a very weak, you know, 25% of what it recommends. Um, you know, specialist feeds do give you certain results. And I think that um, sometimes it's, it's definitely worth investing in that. So. Oh, so do I withhold nitrogen in, in, in one of my feeds? Um, it depends. It depends on, on, on what, again, what I want to achieve. If I'm looking to fatten the tree up, then I, then I will, you know, uh, pump it with some uh, some nitrogen, but only if I can get it organic, which is not very easy. Um, right, is there any way to stop the old bark falling off the fat fat guy or hawthorn? Faisal, <laughs> hi Faisal. The old bark. Um, unfortunately, it's, you're like King Canute. You're trying to hold back the tide. Um, it, it will fall off, um, but it will be replaced by all the bark which is coming underneath. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with sticking it on, you know. Only you and I would know that you did that and all the other people that are watching now, so I'm sorry that's been given away. But, um, yeah, you can stick it back on. Why not? I know somebody that when they were exhibiting their uh, Hawthorne bonsai, they wired the berries on because they all fell off prior to the exhibition. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with doing that, you know, just the same reasons. There's absolutely nothing wrong with if you've got a, a tree that requires a piece of deadwood, sticking the piece of deadwood into the tree. That's fine if it, if it, you know, if it contributes to the overall design. Let me talk to you about styling. I'm going to do a little bit of work on this tree. I'm not going to do a lot of work because when I do my work, I do it slowly, methodically uh, in, in my garden. But I'm going to show you a couple of things that, that I do, which, um, it, which is important in the styling. What I don't like to see, I don't like to see deciduous trees styled like pine trees, like this. You know, that's great with a larch, it's great with a pine, it's great with a yew tree. It isn't good with a beech, it isn't good with a uh, prunus, it's no good with a hawthorn. You really need to style these, either with the branches going slightly random, certainly going upwards, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the lower branches can be down, but they should have other branches which are, which are coming up. Um, if you look at some of the prunus that are styled in Japan, nearly all the branches are going up. 
because they're growing them specifically for the flowers. So let me show you how, uh, how, um, how I create my ramification and how I get the movement into the branches that I need. So I use a combination of techniques. I use wire and I use cut and grow. By far the best is cut and grow. No question about it. But it's nice to put a little bit of movement. And what I do is I use aluminium. Okay, and what I'm using here is one millimeter aluminium. And I'm gonna wire these two branches because at the moment they're very, very straight. So what I need to do is just put a little bit of movement into them. I'm not concerned with the overall style of the tree yet because what I will be doing is once I can see the full branch structure, I'm going to remove some of these branches. I already know one that I'm gonna remove and I'm gonna show you now because I have decided that what you're looking at here is the front. There was a, a point in the um, development of this tree that I was considering this to be the front, but if you look, you'll see it's got a bit of a, a bit of a, a pot belly coming towards you, which is not good. One of the slight downsides of this being the front is that there is a large scar at the front, and you will see it when I remove this branch. So this is the one I'm going to take out. And there's one growing, a branch going down here. So I'm going to bring this closer to the camera, you can see. So it's got this hole at the front, but because of the way it's been carved and the callousing that is taking place, it's now beginning to look natural. What I wouldn't do with that branch was I wouldn't carve it elaborately. You know, this is a small, stocky tree. And as such, won't have, I don't want big fat branches that have, that have been being carved on it. Let me just see if we have another question. Do you let the wire on the long to fixate the branches, Ed van der Riek. I'm sure your English is better than that, Ed. I know it is. Okay. Um, I remember having a discussion with an artist, I can't remember who it was, uh, about actually letting the wire bite in to the bark on a hawthorn. And the reason for that was it will help in the cracking of, of the bark, um, so long as it's not too uniform. So what the suggestion was, was that you would wire it in this direction, let it crack into the bark, and then the next year, wire it in the opposite direction, but making sure that it was random in, in that. Um, I personally have not tried it, but I believe it, it does work. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you. Um, I'm using one millimeter, aluminium. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the base to this little branch here. I'm going to come up here and then I'm going to go along this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick measure. Have it double. And I'm going to come so you can see it it from this side. So I'll just take away the leaves to make it easier for me. So that's my anchor. Take it around. Now, you have to be very, very careful because the best time to do this is when the branch is red. If the branch is green, don't do it. The re I'll show you a green branch.
this one is green now if you wired that now it would simply snap and, and break and you've lost the, you've lost that tip so you have to wait until the branch is red once the branch is red then it's ideal to wire now I don't go all the way to the end Very, very gentle here. So because this is the top of the tree, again, it's not going to come down. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to introduce a small amount of movement into the branch. Not too much, not to exaggerate it. Okay, so what's happening now is this, is that this is a very young branch. It's going to grow and grow and grow. And what we want it to do is when this grows and goes silver and hardens off, timing is, is absolutely critical here. You then cut it back to where you want the new buds to appear. New buds will appear where all of these little, where the um, very soft thorns are. Okay, and then you'll get your second growth for this year. That's very important. All right, so on every branch here, we've had two growths. So what, what I've got here is, this is my first growth this year. I'll cut it back and then the second growth, I will just let go. And what it will do is, that the other thing to bear in mind is, once I've cut it back, I then won't take the wire off until I know that it's completely fixed. And then I'll slowly remove it, making sure not to affect that new, those new buds and the new, new growth that's taking place. Let me just see if we have any more questions. Southern California. It never rains in California, I believe. Argentina, nice to see you. Okay. So I'm gonna do some more work on this. So bearing in mind that this is our front, see we have a new bud here, let's take him out. This branch is coming right the way across the front. This one needs to come over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that one over. Yep. And we'll do that with slightly thicker wire. Again, with, with aluminium. Because what you don't want is, if, if this is gonna be our front, which is nice and fat here, we can see that this branch is going to be our tree, our, 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 our child, we want that full width and we don't want this branch coming across the front, we want it coming over here. So I'm going to wire that now. Do I remove all the berries in the growing season? Absolutely not. If the tree is healthy then the berries are not going to um, affect the health of the tree they're not gonna if the tree is weak then yes of course so <clears throat> okay Alfred second says that when I cut back and I get the second growth I simply let that grow and then once it's reached the desired length that I, that I want, after it's thickened up and set that lower branch, then I will cut it back. But what I'm, what I'm out to achieve is ramification. This tree, its canopy will never go, it's never gonna be bigger than this at all. This is about as big as the canopy is going to be. And what I do need is I do need a clear definition between the child and the mother so I'm gonna to have to be careful here with these branches moving them back so I can see it see a something here between the two but let me move this branch ah, interesting question do I defoliate hawthorns um 
I no, I don't. I don't personally defoliate hawthorns. I know some people do, um, but I think you can achieve the ramification without defoliating. If anybody's unfamiliar with defoliating, basically what it means is taking off all of the all of the leaves of the tree. and letting a second growth come. Now what can happen with the second growth is that they can actually produce slightly smaller leaves. I do defoliate a beech. Okay. So I'm being soft here. I'm not using a very thick wire. Okay. So you can see we've got a really nice movement here. That has got to go. This one, which is uh, in the middle here, that one can go. In fact, I think that that whole branch can go. Okay. So remember what we talked about, what do I want to achieve? Well, what I want to achieve with this branch is I want it to thicken up. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to wire these because at the moment they're incidental, they're too long, they, they, they are, don't form part of my design. I'm just going to let these run long so that will thicken this branch because in the scale of it that's a very skinny branch, it needs to be much thicker. So can you understand why I'm doing that? I'm not creating a finished bonsai right now. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got here. I'm a little concerned with this branch. I don't think we need it. So we're now seeing the trunk a lot better. We don't need these. Okay. We certainly don't need this. Okay, um, Peter Kirkham in Greece. Have I removed the field soil? Um, if, uh, if you're familiar with uh, my uh, YouTube videos and my blog, you'll see that I remove oil, <coughs> oil, <laughs> all mountain soil prior to um, uh, putting it into the soil mixture. There's never any mountain soil in any of the Yamadori I collect. So that is not an issue, Peter, but uh, it's a good question. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. I think everybody else can read that comment. I don't need to read it out. Um, I'm going to just wire these. And because this is a, this is a child, I, I'm, what I'm going to do in actual fact, I'm going to pull this. I'm going, to, I'm going to move it forward slightly and then bring this up. So I'll need some slightly thicker wire. Bear with me. You can't see this, but I've got a, a, a small lump here, which I, I'm using to anchor this wire.
I've had to use a little bit of copper there, uh, but I've not wound it tightly, you can see, on the branch. So you can see what I've done here. So I'm going to just wire these up slightly. This one is a little bit green, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to use these, do these two. using aluminium because it's 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 really is so very gentle but again I don't wire all the way to the end so what we're going to do again put a little bit of movement into this To reaffirm, I will let these grow. When they turn silver and set, I will then cut back to here. I don't really envisage this to be much bigger than that when it's finished, but complete ramification. When this gets a little strong, a little longer, I will trim it off. I quite like that going straight up. Anything else that's growing down wants to come off. You're all very quiet out there. I'm, I'm talking directly to you. You can ask any question about hawthorns. Clear. Okay. I'll take that off anyway. Okay. So I'm just going to wire these. Oh, interesting question. Again, Alfred, you're busy with the questions. Disease. There is a real problem with hawthorns. You get two. One of them is peach leaf curl. Peach leaf curl, unfortunately, when you've got it in a tree, you rarely can get rid of it. All you can do is manage it. And the way you manage it is using just prior or just as the buds are beginning to burst, uh, come out, the new leaves, uh, spray with uh, copper, Murphy's copper, if you can get it. If you can't get it, the alternative is something called Bordeaux mix, which um, is uh, it's, 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 it's contains a certain amount of, of, of copper sulfite, sulfate in there. Um, so peach leaf curl is a problem. The other one is, um, is mold. Um, and the crazy thing about mold is you think you're getting mold because you're using too much water uh, and mold manifests itself by uh, the leaves turning slightly uh, white and getting white on them um, in actual fact it's when the tree's too dry it's the exact opposite of what you think so there's all, those are the only two things that problems that I've had um, I think as well you can never really over water a hawthorn um, the, you, you can definitely underwater it, but uh, you, you, you can't overwater it because I mean it, it's you know um, its mythical sign is water, so it's you know it's a water uh, loving plant. Bonsai Dave, Dave, you could have just come round to our garden, you know that. Yeah. Um, when do I start to feed newly collected trees? I did mention that earlier. You've obviously just turned up. Um, uh, I will. Only when I know that the tree is very well established will I give feed to a newly collected. It's usually going towards the end of the season. So in autumn time, really in preparedness for it going into winter. So you're hardening off uh, uh, that, that new growth. So I would only feed really towards the end 
uh, of the first growing season and then just a weak solution ideally uh, seaweed uh, or, or 0 10 10 if you can get hold of 0 10 10 oh, let me just do this last two, these last two here again what I'm going to do is double it up How is everybody doing down, during the lockdown? I think we're very lucky that we have our bonsai. And, 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 and I know that we're fortunate here that we actually have a garden that we can, uh, we can be in. Um, again, for those of you who follow my Facebook page avidly, I'm sure there are so many of you, um, we are fortunate to live right on the edge of the city uh, of Manchester and Bury. And um, we have the countryside literally on our doorstep. We step out of our front door straight into some beautiful woods. Uh, my wife and I, uh, ideally, <laughs> if, we, if we can, get up very early and 6.30, 7 o'clock, and go out for a walk, catch the bird song early in the morning. Um, and it's we are very very lucky where we live i certainly feel for those who are uh, stuck inside with uh, confinement okay um all right what i'm going to do is i'm going to Let's say separate this out so you can see where it's going. So I need to pull this one round. <clears throat> so in a mother and child, you, you, you need an absolute definition between the child and, and, and the mother. One of the uh, things that I really love to do actually I, is I, 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 love, I love to listen to music when I'm working but I'm not playing it now and uh, absolutely one of my favorite bands right now are the Slow Readers Slow Readers Club in Manchester those guys have just released an amazing new album uh, which is the joy of the return it's a um, it's a fantastic I definitely recommend that uh, you uh, if you get the chance go and see these guys live they are truly fantastic live I just need to cut that off. Um, get to listen to them on Spotify first, and um, definitely check them out. Amazing band, amazing band. So, here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull him around towards the back. Oh, are all of my hawthorns of the same variety? <laughs> there are greater than 50 varieties in Georgia. Are we talking Georgia, America or Georgia just outside Europe? I believe probably Georgia, America. Are we talking about Georgia? You need to confirm that, Amy. Are you in America? Are you in America? Anyway, the species that I'm working on here is uh, Crotagus uh, <laughs> monogyna, I think. One second. This is going to be a really good back branch. And it will... Come around. There we go. Let me do this so you can see it. Come on this side. What I'm doing as well is I'm bending the branch and wiring at the same time.
just like the other branch on this side I'm not going to cut these because I want this branch to set in this position so I'm going to bend him back around I'm going to pull these together There we have a really good start of our back, our back branch. You can see it splits from one branch to two to four. But again, this branch will ne not be any longer than this. Let's see if there's any more questions. do with this one is I'm going to actually uh, not put not put wire on it but I'm going to tourniquet it to this back branch here using a very fine wire so we've got a branch we have a, a small branch growing downwards here which is not desirable What we have here is we have a, um, a thorn and there's a bud here. So what will happen is a new branch will grow from there in the position that I want because it'll be softer. So I'm just putting a loop around here. I'm going to pull this down. Again, I'm not going to cut this branch off because I want this branch to set. You can see here where I cut off previous branches. You have to leave a little stub because at a later date, like now, you can come and remove those. Okay. Let's see if we have any more questions. Very kind of you, Chris. That's very kind of you. So, um, I'm sure there's other things I need to talk to you about. Um, I'll talk to you about pots. Um, there is a discussion amongst um, bonsai artists about deciduous trees and the kind of pots that they should be in, and they. Um, this is a flowering and fruiting tree, so it should be in a um, in a glazed pot, you know, not a not a, a, a deep red that you would expect to see in a juniper or a yew tree or a pine. So um, I actually have the pot for this, and I'm going to go and get it. There is another tree in it at the moment, but when you see the pot, first of all, you probably think it's going to be too small. And that's one of the problems that I think that we have, uh, particularly in Europe, is we overpot our trees. We put them in pots that are too, visually too big, mainly because we're scared that they won't thrive. Um, so, you know, uh, I'll show you the pot that I that I've got for this. Put it alongside of it. Okay. 
So there is the pot. I'm going to put it the wrong way around. There is the pot. And there we go. Yeah, so you can see it's a it's a it's a really nice pot um, by a French potter. I can't remember his name. Please, if you know who it is, please put it out there. Um, it's a, a slight cream with a crackle on it, and that will perfectly complement this because this will have white flowers, red berries, uh, and this pot is absolutely the perfect size for it. The, let's get the fr let's try and get the front. So that, that is the root ball size. It, it, it will easily fit in here. Uh, but this, this, by the way, is a prune spinosa, which just, we needed to get it into a, a pot. So uh, it's, um, this is actually at the wrong angle. This, pot, this tree should really be like this, but it's just temporarily in here. But I think this is the perfect pot for, for this, um, this tree. Somebody who has come late to the party, Mr. Kirkham. Uh, the soil mixture for newly collected uh, Yamadori, Hawthorn, um, is a high amount of uh, Akadama, 60% uh, Akadama. Uh, the rest is made up of pumice or sharp and sharp sand or alpine grit as we call it. Um, more established trees um, is even higher percentage of Akadama, 80%. And then the rest made up of pumice or grit. Okay. So we have just looking here, just going through the questions. Bear with me, please. Viriato in Portugal has asked the question uh, I've had a hawthorn for six years and suddenly some veins died I suspected a fungal in the roots do you usually apply some kind of antifungal in the soil to prevent this kind of situation I've never experienced it personally um, are you sure it's fungal and maybe not root rot that, that, that is a possibility that does happen with um, with hawthorns uh, <coughs> If it's a fungal infection, I would, um, I, again, I would use copper. That's something that, um, uh, you know, as we said, with peach leaf curl. So uh, it, I, I would Bordeaux mix if you can't get hold of Murphy's copper. Very awesome. Nice to see you, by the way. How are the dogs? Okay. Right. Um, if we have no more questions, I'm going to sign off. Um, I, you'll have noticed that I'm uh, publishing a lot of pictures of, of uh, some of my trees in the garden. Actually, I'm just noticed there's one thing I want to show you which has not appeared on any other videos. You're the first to see it. Um, it did appear in a couple of live broadcasts, but only briefly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you now. Um, I just need to clear this space. It's a hawthorn. Okay, I'm going to step aside so you can see the silhouette. Um, what this is, is a representation of a landscape where I live. 
and also uh, the landscape of where I collect my hawthorns. So the, this is the limestone that it grows amongst. And the trees grow directly into the limestone. Now, the interesting thing about this tree is I've actually used the model of a real tree out in the wild as an example. And you'll notice that I've, I've got my branch structure where I want it. Um, it's only, as I said earlier, when I cut do I start to get new growth. So there, I can't see any flower buds on this yet. Um, I'm not expecting it to flower this year. I am expecting it to flower next year. But what my regime for this tree is to take away the buds that are moving, that, that are in the middle here. So I will go through and remove all of these little, uh, little buds that are growing in the middle. The difference between a shrub, a bush, and a tree is a tree has branches. A bush simply has growth everywhere. So it's a, you know, as opposed to this being a bush, it's a tree. Uh, the other interesting thing about this composition is this is actually Yamadori, this um, Cotoniaster. Cotoniaster microphylla uh, is actually Yamadori as well. So this is a Yamadori hawthorn with a Yamadori Cotoniaster microphylla that was growing very close to where where this uh, tree was was uh, was grown. So as I said, so what will happen here is, is that when I've got extensions like this, I don't want that growing anymore. So what I'll do is right now, I'll pinch it out. I use the sharp sharpness of my thumb here, and I will just pinch out all of these that I don't want extending. Yeah. But you can see it's got pretty good ramification coming now. This is about five years, four years, five years in development. Um, I'm going to show you this branch here. This is, this needs to be removed. The reason it needs to be removed is it's A, it's spoiling the visual line here, but also it's got this strange nodule at the top. So let's take him off. And you can see now, We've got a very good branch structure. Yeah. I'm going to take that one out. All of these that are growing down will be taken out. Let me have a long one. So that's the back of the tree. And there's the front. So thank you for watching. Um, I will be doing something similar later in the year with the uh, with the yew trees that I've got. Uh, so it'd be nice for you to check in. Thank you from around the world, everybody. Uh, stay safe. Uh, Self isolate, and um, most of all, enjoy your bonsai. So thank you for watching.